And so I, I love the story, and I think I, I preached on it last year, but um, I love the story of Jacob. And so I told Betsy, I said, you know, lots of times we get into those uh, these and thous and uh, this begot him and this begot that and, and we lose, lose some of the story sometimes and everybody thinks that scripture is boring. Well, if you think scripture is boring, read about Jacob because I swear it's like an episode on TV like the sister's wives or, or, or whatever. You, there are all kinds of different shows on there that, that throw all kinds of weird stuff out there. Well, Jacob was involved in all kinds of things between uh, deceit and tricksters and, and multiple wives and, and the years that he spent, all those things, and, and running from his brother. <laughs> from the very birth, he, he was chasing after his brother, grabbing onto his heel. And so then, and as time goes on, his brother was real nonchalant about his heritage and about his life, and so God knew. And, but at the same time, there was some trickster in there, and his mom helped in that. But he went and took that heritage and ran away with it. And then fell in love. And I said, it, it's, it's amazing because I never looked at the scripture quite the same. I heard somebody preaching on it last year and that's what drawed my attention. I said, you know how, how we are uh, around ladies when you're a bachelor and you're looking, you know, you know, looking to impress and stuff. Jacob came to that well and all those other men were waiting around for the other men to get there so they could move that stone off of them. Here, here come Rachel right off the top of that hill. And Jacob's like, you know, I'll, I'll move that for you. And shifted it right off the top of that well and looked to impress. And so he fell in love at first sight, even as she come up over the hill. And gave up seven years of his life to get her and then gave up another seven years to receive her. And, and that's a lot. So we always think of Jacob as that love story. We think, we think of it as that, that time he spent hunting and searching for for his relationship with Rachel, but there's so much more there. And so he, 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 there's a lot of ups and downs. And the story of Jacob, you know, we tend to find that, that Jacob was two separate men. We find that, that Jacob is, uh, is someone who is known as a deceiver or a trickster in his life. Uh, he, uh, he, uh, he, he manipulates or, manip or was manipulated by others. Um, and the other is that faithful, bold, loving man of God. And so he was, he was kind of as we are as sinners. God created us to be so-so and we've allowed other things to come in and we're living our lives in such a way the pattern is still there and traits of it will pop up along the way. But at the same time, we're not lined up exactly where we should be for who God created us to be to come out and be seen, to be noticed, and for us to fully receive what God intends us to have. And so that, that's how we look at Jacob, is Jacob as two men constantly struggling in his relationship. And if it not for the promise that was made to Abraham, who knows where Jacob would have been with the, with the type of man that he was, at least in the younger part of his life. And so either way, God was blessing him because of that promise that he had made to, his, to the father Abraham. But there came a time when Jacob had to come to grips with things. And I, I think that's what God does with us. He deals with us lots of times, whether we're saved, whether we're not saved. There's a place that we get to, to where we have to come with grips to who God created us to be or who we choose that we're going to be. And, and so this is that place for Jacob. Jacob came to a place where he had to come to grips with who he was and who he was that God created him to be or even who he wanted to be. I think sometimes we struggle with this idea of who we would like to be, but we don't want to go through the process of growth that it takes to get there. You know, I, I said at the first of the year, I was praying for that job to come my way because I knew that the stuff that was entailed in that job was something that I needed to grow in, not only at work, but in life. And so I asked for that, and I asked for that responsibility to come my way, and then you get thrown into it, and you go from this place where you're experienced and you're seasoned, and not to say anything that I don't make mistakes, but in work, you rarely ever make a mistake, and if you do, you can fix it quick, because you know what you're doing, and you make it right, to a place to where I'm uncomfortable, 
I don't know what I'm doing, and it seems like I'm apologizing every time I turn around because I constantly make mistakes. And so she deals with me in such a way that I can continue to grow, that that mistake does not define me, but it helps me to grow into the person that will be what I was. Someone that maybe don't ever or hardly ever make a mistake in that, and if you do, you can fix it and move on. And so there's, there's a growth process sometimes that we're not willing to, to, to go into because we think that we shouldn't make mistakes. Well, God created us, and we make mistakes. We're flawed human beings. We, we make mistakes. And so every time we turn around, we make decisions that change the outcome of this and change the outcome of that. And I, and I preached in the past that even though we do those things, God's still with us. So we look at Jacob's life, and Jacob done some things maybe that he shouldn't have done or been involved in situations that he shouldn't have been involved in, but because of the promise, God was with him. And so God was with him. And, but there come a time where you have to come to grips. And this is the place where Jacob was in, in Genesis 32, 24 through 32. And the scripture says, And Jacob was left alone, and there wrestled a man with him until the breaking of the day. And when he saw that he had prevailed not against him, he touched the hollow of his thigh, and the hollow of Jacob's thigh was out of joint. And he wrestled with him. And he said, Let me go, for the, for the day breaketh. And he said, I will not let thee go, except thou bless me. And he said unto him, what is thy name? And he said, Jacob. And he said, Thy name shall be called no more Jacob, but Israel. For as a prince thou hast power with God and with men, and hast prevailed. And Jacob asked him and said, Tell me, I pray thee, thy name. And he said, Wherefore is it that thou dost ask after my name? And he blessed him there. And Jacob called the name of the place Peniel. And I have sent... For I have seen God's faith, seen God face to face, and my life is preserved. And as he passed Peniel, the sun rose upon him, and he halted upon his thigh. Therefore the children of Israel eat not of the sinew which, which shrank, which is upon the hollow of the thigh unto this day, because he touched the hollow of Jacob's thigh. And so... Jacob had to come to grips with some things. And I find that, that popular that he's wrestling with something. He's, he's wrestling with God. He's wrestling with God. He's trying to, and, and, and I didn't really look at it from that perspective quite the same in, until I was reading it the other day, that, you know, he was wrestling with God not for the blessing of God because the blessing of God was already there. He was, he was wrestling with him over what, he wanted to be and had struggled to be and God had created him to be but he couldn't get the stuff out of the way and accept it and so he was wrestling more against himself than he was wrestling against God and and, and so you know different people have have, have different thoughts or, or different things when it comes to Jacob about about who he was wrestling with you know some people think that it was the pre-incarnated Christ and others thought it was an angel and and some suggest that Jacob was only wrestling in prayer and not not person to person and, and but you know it, it, it what is a great example of it what it is 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 uh, how yet we are so unwilling to let go of all the stuff that makes us what we are. Jacob struggled to the point of permanent physical damage 